Hey, my name's Jason Creel and you're watching Lawn Care Life. Today I'm going to take you in the yard and we're going to talk about a question that I sometimes think about, maybe occasionally get asked, but I thought maybe it'd be on your mind. What do you do if you've got a yard and it's got multiple grass types in the same yard? You know what I'm talking about? You got a yard and you've got, like for me for instance, you got a yard, you got Bermuda grass, Zoysia grass, centipede grass, St. Augustine grass, all in the same yard. And all of them have different recommendations on how you're gonna treat it, how you're gonna mow it, how you're gonna take care of it, that sort of thing. What do you do? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Stay tuned. All right, let's walk around in the yard. I'm gonna show you some different grass types so you can at least see them. Now, I'm dealing with warm season grasses. I'm in Alabama. So if you're dealing with, with cool season grasses, fescue, ryegrass, Kentucky bluegrass, things like that, then some of these same principles are going to apply to you but let's in this specific video we're going to be showing you warm season grasses and talking about what to do when you've got more than one in your yard all right so the time of this video is let's see uh, end of late september so this is bermuda grass you can see some leaves on the ground and the bermuda is starting to lose some color because we're heading into fall so you got bermuda here then you got you know the barren nothing over here with moss you got some common bermuda looks like just struggling to make it with some uh carpet grass mixed in there remember the carpet grass got the seed heads got a y with the kicker on it and then then you come over here you got you start seeing some centipede moss patch This actually is a, a Z52 zoysia. And look here, what is that? That's St. Augustine. Got the wide leaf blade. Actually looks about as healthy as I've ever seen it. So I got a little patch of St. Augustine and then you get in the front yard, a lot of centipede, almost all centipede except this part here where we had to dig a hole in the yard and to replace a pipe and what happened the bermuda filled in quicker than the than the centipede could so you see here that's bermuda let's get over here centipede all right multiple grass types and of course there's my arch enemy dallas grass so we've established that there's multiple grass types in this lawn. So what do you do about it? Well, let's talk about some different situations. In this particular lawn, we've got centipede almost exclusively in the front yard. In the backyard, there's plenty of shade problems going down some slopes. You got moss growing, stuff like that. But where there is sun, I've got Bermuda. And on the hillside, I didn't show you over on the other side, same situation, it's on a slope and you got Bermuda there where there's sun and then it gets closer under the trees and not much is growing. And now I've got some zoysia mixed in, different spots. I had, you know, some landscapers that give me sod that's left over from a job. I put them in the shady areas to help it try to get to grow. So what would I do? So let's talk about this specific yard and how I handle it. And then we'll talk about some other situations that I might handle differently. To me, in a situation like this, where you've got a dominant grass in the front yard, this case centipede, and a dominant grass in the backyard, in this case Bermuda, then I'm gonna basically treat it like two separate properties, even from a mowing standpoint. Because you know what I'm saying? A lot of times you're cutting a centipede yard, they may say, you know, cut it frequently and, and lower and that sort of thing. So I'm not necessarily gonna cut my front yard more often than I am my backyard. But let's just say you're mowing weekly, then I could see cutting the, the centipede at an inch and a half or two inches. And the Bermuda, I may raise the deck a little bit higher when I get to the backyard. That doesn't look terribly awkward to me to have two different heights in that situation. But now, where I've got a little patch of St. Augustine that connects into the centipede, and you think, well, a lot of times people cut St. Augustine at three or four inches tall. Well, I'm not gonna raise the deck and cut the St. Augustine up three to four inches for one little patch of St. Augustine. So I think there's some common sense involved here. If you've got two primary grass types, you wanna treat it separately from a mowing standpoint, go ahead. From a weed control fertilization standpoint, you know, my centipede 
is not supposed to have that much nitrogen put on it. No more than maybe two pounds of nitrogen per calendar year per thousand square feet. Well, the Bermuda in the back can handle much more than that. So what am I gonna do? I can use, again, treating it like two separate yards. I can use a, a fertilizer that has a lower amount of nitrogen on the centipede and use one that has a higher amount of nitrogen on the backyard. Or I can simply put more of the same fertilizer out on the Bermuda than I do the centerpiece. Either way works in that situation. Next thought in this situation is that you want to have a long-term plan for your yard. So let's just say that I've got situations in my yard I showed you. There's moss, not enough sunlight, the Bermuda's struggling because it really doesn't tolerate shade. Well, what's my long-term plan there? Am I just wanting to have struggling Bermuda? I see people and they'll have a backyard. I saw one yesterday. Backyard, really rough shape, and it has some centipede, a lot of shade, and the centipede's just barely surviving. And my guess is it's probably been barely surviving back there for years. Well, I just try to explain to the customer that, you know, that backyard is never going to really do that well because it's not ideal conditions for that centipede grass to grow. There's not enough sunlight and it's going to continue to struggle. You may have to come up with what's my long-term plan. Am I okay with this grass never looking good or is it time just to scrap it? And I know some of you cool season guys, you just say, well, why don't you just kill it all and overseed it in the fall and let it grow? You know, that doesn't really work the same down here for our grass types. I mean, maybe somebody's been successful with that, but I definitely don't advise my customers to go kill their whole yard and start over unless they're wanting to put sod out and willing to invest the money. So, for instance, that lady I was talking about has a lot of shade, got centipede grass. If she wants to bring a landscaper in, scrape the yard and put down some emerald zoysia sod that's going to handle much more shade then she can do that but you're looking at a big expense that many homeowners are not willing to put out i think another thing you want to do too is understand what the grasses are going to do in a specific situation so for instance where i've got a situation where i've got centipede and bermuda what typically happens in my experience the centipede begins to take over the bermuda so how does that play out let's say you got a yard and you've got 95 percent bermuda you've got five percent centipede mixed in with the bermuda what do you do from what i've experienced if you do much of nothing the centipede is going to turn into 10 percent and 15 percent and 20 percent and eventually the centipede is going to win out and begin taking over that bermuda now maybe you want that maybe you don't if you don't want that then what i do in that situation which is much different than the lawn i've showed you where you've got dominant grass in one area and dominant grass in the other this is a situation where you've got a grass and just a little bit of another grass mixed in then what i'm trying to do is get rid of that grass that's mixed in so if it's 95 percent bermuda i've got five percent centipede mixed in i want to get rid of that five percent of centipede so what do i do well when i'm spraying the yard there's a lot of things that are, you can use on Bermuda that are, that are not really good for centipede lines. So for instance, 2,4-D. Well, I'm gonna treat that yard like a Bermuda yard. I'm gonna spray it with 2,4-D when it's time to control the weeds, knowing that that's probably gonna cause some damage to the centipede. Well, guess what? I wanna cause damage to that centipede because ultimately I don't want that 5% of centipede in the lawn. I'm hoping that that 2,4-D or that revolver, or whatever product I'm using, will ultimately help the Bermuda take over the centipede because I know that if I don't do something to the centipede, the centipede is gonna begin taking over more and more of that lawn. Understand your situation. Which grass ultimately is going to be best in your lawn for the long term? Which grass do you currently have more of? And if you left it alone and did nothing, which one is going to begin to take over the lawn? Is that the one you want to take over lawn? If not, what are you gonna do to change it? Are you gonna pay thousands of dollars to have the yard resodded? Or is there another approach through using herbicides or something like that where you can begin trying to get rid of one grass type out of another and let the one that is ideal for your situation take over? For instance, like I said, if you've got plenty of sunlight, centipede or Bermuda would grow, but I don't, if you don't want the centipede in there and you've got mostly Bermuda, let's try to get rid of the centipede. If it's 50-50 split, 50% centipede, 50% Bermuda, 
Well, then, you know, it's hard to get rid of one of them, with, you know, without killing half the yard. So unless you're willing to do that and let the Bermuda then take over, then you may have to make a situation a compromise and kind of treat it like two separate yards, like I was saying. Or you treat it like the more sensitive grass. For instance, you know, let's say I've got Bermuda centipede. Well, I don't want to use 2,4-D because it can hurt the centipede. Well, then I might use something like Trimex Southern or something like that that it'd be safe on both of them, okay? So you might have to make a compromise if you're trying to keep both of them and treat it like the more sensitive grass type. If I've got St. Augustine and Zoysia, believe it or not, I've got a yard that has that combination in it. Well, I can't just go in there and hammer it with stuff that I know is gonna be harmful to the St. Augustine grass. That would be safe to the Zoysia grass. So I have to basically treat it like a St. Augustine yard because the products that are safe for St. Augustine are also in turn safe for the Zoysia. All right, enough talking, but in conclusion, make a plan, decide what you want your yard to look like when it's finished. Is there, do you need to treat this like one yard or like two separate yards? If there's just a little bit of one grass and a lot of another, then let's try to get rid of that one that has just a little bit and keep the dominant grass. But if it's kind of a 50-50 split, then treat it like the more sensitive grass type and try to make a happy medium with both of them, unless they're just so ugly you can't live with them, you know, where it just looks weird. It does look weird to have St. Augustine and Zoysia in the same lawn, it just looks weird. They're just two different grass types, they don't look the same, they don't blend well. Where if you had some emerald Zoysia mixed in with some Bermuda, that doesn't look terrible. Or maybe some St. Augustine with Centipede, that doesn't usually look terrible. But some combinations just look weird, and to me, you wanna to try to get rid of one to make it look more normal. Let me hear from you guys. If you run into this situation, if you had more than one grass type, what'd you do? Did you live with both? Did you try to get rid of one? Or do you have a situation now and you want to ask a question? Let me hear from you in the comments. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. Got a lot of videos about how to get rid of weeds, identifying weeds, things like that. So subscribe and I will be talking to you guys later and hope to continue to provide more helpful content. If you're in a lawn business, don't forget about the 2018 Lawn Care Life Conference sponsored by Jobber coming up November 15th and 16th. More details at LawnCareLife.com. Hope to see many of you there.